and adoration, give him all honor. He is Alpha and Omega, his living of the valley. We just have two days for this month to come. So we are almost at the end of the year, and it's something to celebrate. This year is not a year that you can play with. Generations, 2020 will be mentioned. The year that came with a lot of things. Lives have been lost in this year, but God will preserve your life. People have lost their source of livelihood, but God allow you to still have something to do. People have lost their dreams, aspirations. Generational wealth have been wiped out. But we are about to enter a search because God preserved you for a purpose. If you are standing with your feet this season, this time, you know that God loves you. Because many desire to see this day, not because they are not worthy, but because the mercy of God is upon our life. I just want us to thank you one more time. Say, Lord, I thank you for, for allowing me to see this almost the end of the year. Ah, the Kataraba. This is the God of the 11th hour. This is the 11th month, the end of it. And we are still here. It is not a thing to put up a badge of pride, but it's something to give glory to God. Because it is only by the power of God that it is possible. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says the entrance of the world giveth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we hear and speak now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You might be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, I kind of want us to, to pray as we talk. You know, the Bible said something. Today, the word of God for us is the mystery of territorial power. To be able to control a territory, you have to be a man of the spirit, a woman of the spirit, a person of the spirit. For you to function in a territorial environment and be active you have to you have to know the spiritual mapping of that area you have to know it not just knowing it in the physical but knowing the force In the name of Jesus Christ. For the place God has placed you is important to God as it's important to you. Because you are placed in those environments to be the voice of God there. Every family that God has allowed you to come into, it is not by accident that you are in that family. It is anywhere you see yourself. Never you regret where you could have been or where you could have gone. The, the hand of God, the Bible said, the step of the righteous is ordered. When you hear the word order, it's a command. It's ordered by the Lord. So the Lord allows us to exercise authorities and dominion in the places that we have because he wants us to be there. But it's depending on us also to be able to make advantage and advancement into the next dimension. You are the one that will take yourself to the next place. God made it clear to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible said, after Moses died, the people were not clear. They don't know whether Moses is going to come back or he will not. But God came and told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. He said, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. The soul of your foot shall tread upon. I have given to you for possession. So it is not of God anymore. As long as you see yourself walking anywhere, this is my territory. I have to possess that territory. I have told us before that there are three lands in every Christian life. There's a land of your nativity, which is where you are born. There's a land of your possession, 
the lands that you possess, a city, a nation, a place, and there's a land of your inheritance. And all of them can be one place. And sometimes they can be multiple places. You can be born in Georgia, and Georgia is the land of nativity. But if you understand spiritual, territorial power, Georgia can be your land of possession. Then, if you begin to walk in the path of God, you can also have Georgia as your land of inheritance. Which some things will happen that you will be given lands that you did not work for. Because inheritance, you don't have to do anything, but you have to be a part of the family. And what God is looking for in a man is a family. That's why God created man. God wanted a family. He created man. When the first Adam disappointed God, God was bringing us back with that window. He brought the second Adam. Who was his word? And the word came and dwelt among men. Hallelujah. Amen. And that word is the light of men. And that is what we are. We have to carry that light. Because your light must continue to shine. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you enter a territory and sometimes people come into a place and the place is dark. They want to run because that place is all over the place. Let me tell you something. Let me give you, can I tell you this good news? The, the darker the place, the brighter your light will shine. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't bless it. If you have a small light and you put that small light in a very big dark place, that is the only thing that everybody will see. Amen. So the darker a place, the more terrible people are. Wickedness is everywhere. And you are a light. You show up there. The darkness cannot, will not, has never consumed light. I don't care how small or big the light is. There have never been anywhere in any situation that darkness overrides light. Amen. The Bible says light shines in darkness. Yes. And darkness cannot, will not comprehend it. Amen. I see Christians, they go to the place and there's one or two challenges. They will run for their hills and say, what? Do you know who you are? I don't know why God brought you to that place. Maybe for such a time as that. And maybe people have cried unto God to send light. And God sent you into that family. And because you see darkness, you run. You disappoint God. Because God will use you to change. We are his battle axe. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. So the, 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 the mystery of territorial power is to do spiritual mapping. Not just to the place. Some of us have been in our neighborhood for a while. But we don't know the powers that operate in that neighborhood. But if you begin to go into the spirit and say, God, show me this city, this land that I am in. Open my eyes to the spirit. Let me begin to understand the dimensions of what is going on here. Then you begin to do spiritual mapping in the spirit. Your eyes of understanding shall become enlightened. And God will begin to show you your neighborhood that you have lived in for a while. Show you that neighborhood again. And you begin to see the neighborhood in a different dimension. Now you know the powers that operate in that place. You can now say, okay, these powers, I don't want them to operate anymore. Because I am here, their activities has ended. But as, as you begin to say it, things will begin to change. Let's go and have some Bible context. Hey, I've been talking without opening the word, but let's go into the Bible. Amen. Amen. We talk about life and darkness. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. The beginning of beginnings. I like to go there because even though we have read it many times, but in every time we get back into the book of Genesis chapter 1, there is a revelation that is given to us. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens. So there are many heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the day. And the Spirit of God over, over the face of the water was afraid, and God said, let there be light. It did not take darkness a year to live. It didn't take darkness two hours to live. It was instantaneous. It was immediately. When light came 
and the light did not come from somebody. Let the light, light began to shine inside darkness. And darkness could not comprehend. Darkness disappeared. Because separated the light from darkness. Today, God is going to separate you from every darkness. Amen. There is no way darkness shall come from you. Amen. You cannot. The Bible says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with them. The rod of the ungodly, the Bible says, cannot, will not rest upon the rod of the righteous. It cannot. It doesn't matter what they have planned. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 7, four nations gathered against Judea, and they planned it, and it was well organized. They took time to say what we are going to do, we will invest into them, and we will bring down the king, and we will put a new king that we rule them. And in verse 7 of Isaiah chapter 7, the Bible says, God came back and spoke to the king of Judah and said, I have seen what they have planned and what they have done, but let me tell you something, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. And as they came, the Bible said, that in one way shall the enemy come, but in seven ways always scattered. So I don't care who is gathering there, don't be afraid of their gathering. The Bible says in Isaiah 54 verse 15, surely they shall gather. So when God says surely, I don't stop the devil from gathering. I don't stop witches and wizards from gathering. I don't stop evil men from gathering. That's not my position or my expression. You can gather as much as you want. I can even hear what you are planning to do, but you cannot do it. You cannot establish your enterprise. Because God has given me a wisdom and a mouth that the enemy cannot gain say or resist. The devil cannot resist my mouth. He cannot get say of anything I say. So when they have gathered in different places, huh? don't you see when when the, when the king Balak back when I call the prophet Balak, a man of God, oh like I, because of money, oh money, I can't show every negative spirit of money. Amen. I see man prophesy against the children of God. And Balak went and raised seven boys in seven different mountains, nothing worked. At the time, the Spirit of God said, don't go. He went again. And God put in his mouth blessings. Amen. In Numbers 23, 23, the Bible says, he, he said, There's, there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither shall there be any divination against Israel. If you read before, he says, he saw them as a lion coming. And they were divided. You cannot be caused. Amen. Because of that one sin, Balaam was a great prophet. But God destroyed that man. Oh, may you never fall into temptation that is above you. Amen. He was, how much will the king give you that God does not have? The Bible says God is the king, is, 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 is the, the one that owns the sheep of a thousand nails. He says, Silver is mine, gold is mine. Is there anything to have it? So surely they are gathered, but their gathering should not scale. You know if it gives you an opportunity to prepare better, to know what to say. Because sometimes we allow you to preview what the devil is planning and what they are about to do. That does not put you in a disadvantaged position. That you have information that somebody has planned to kill you gives you a competitive advantage. Because now you know how to speak and what to say. But then that's Christians when we hear Evil is coming. We are on our heels. Why are you running? Where are you going? Hallelujah. Amen. It's time for you to stand and take your ground. When Jacob left that day and ran for his life, when his brother was about to kill him, he wasted 20 years. The you never waste years. Amen. Amen. This was a man that prophecy had come upon his life. Before he was born, the Bible said the prophecy said the two nations are in a womb. The younger shall be greater than the elder. When Jacob came, Jacob wanted to be Esau by all means. And one thing I will tell you is never be in competition with anybody. God has made you perfect. Your mold is just your mold in the hand. That's why you are dumb bread. Your DNA cannot match even your twin brother, your twin sister, your father, your mother. You cannot match them because you are unique. God loves you the way you are. Just don't envy anybody. Don't be in some people.
people's space. The Bible says he came to the gates of five. Some people have two and some have one. But what is the, the end result is that everybody must get to 100 percent And if 100 is the goal, if you have one talent, you will still get to 100. So why should I? According to their several abilities, that somebody has the ability to do five things and you have the ability to do one, don't envy them because they must do five things to get to 100. You have to do one to get there. That's the way God put it, it's so unique. If somebody has more ability, if they do two, they will never get 100. If they do three things, they will never get 100. They have to operate in five different capacities to get to 100. So you, you just have to think one thing. Because that's the ability God gave you. So when the man that got one talent, the Bible says he went and hid it. He thought he was on disadvantage. He was never disadvantaged. The goal is 100. 100% of whatever you have, you have to multiply. Why didn't he train with his talent? He did it. And that's what the devil has been telling us. So many times you come out in from the same father, the same mother, from the same community, some people go to the same schools and you see your mates and they have gone ahead of you. Don't envy them. Don't jealous them. But I'm saying when you see the wicked prospering, don't envy them. Because one day you shall look for them and they shall be caught. Hallelujah. Just stay at the place of God. Haven't you read in the book of Isaiah 40, 31? The Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There is going to be an empowerment. God will give you what we call an acceleration. He will stimulate your life after you have waited. Maybe they have, in, in two, in fact, let me put it this way. In two, three years, they have achieved everything you want to achieve. And you have not even discovered the job. I remember one time I came with one of my friends, one of my best friends in high school. My younger sister was telling me that she went for their traditional marriage. And then I was not married then. And they already have a son. And they already have um, a car. You know, has a good job in Abuja. All that is good things. So my sister was telling me that, you know, the brother, why not just bring a woman, marry now? Look at your friend. I said, look, we are not in competition at home. I never heard about that kind of thing. Three years after I was in Abuja doing the conference, he was in that conference. And he came to meet me. And I saw him, I was surprised. I began to talk about him. And he has been suffering for 80 years. Wow. They can't even feed him. He just has only that one must die. And I have children. I saw him and I remember what my sister told me when he came and got married. I told him to bring his wife, he bring his wife and his child, they came to my hotel room, I told them to kneel down. And I took the oil and poured upon him and began to speak. I'm sure this is him. I've not seen him, but I think the client began to get better because the one that just passed away. So when my family went for the burial, they saw him. But he still have only that child. Why you want to be like somebody else? There is something that is there for you. to have children. It was back to back. In fact, sometimes I wave hand to my wife, she's pregnant. I was even afraid of greeting her. Because I greet her, she's pregnant. If I say, how are you doing, she's pregnant? I say, what is this? It was back to back to back. There was no stress because then I wait upon the Lord. Amen. Shall we need their strength? Yes. They shall mount up with as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be weary. And even if God did not show up in that capacity. What your assignment is and that person is not the same. Yes. So don't be saying this person and not this and that. What did God call you to do? Yes. You are not in the same boat. That's why you have to know your environment. Understand who you are called to be and what is in you. What be. The, the greatest discovery is not electricity. It is not internet. It is not highways. It is not railroads. It is discovery of personality. When you discover yourself, you have, your life is made from that day. Yeah, it might take you 10 years now to begin to actualize what you have discovered. But 
your discovery of personality is the greatest discovery. You walk in your pace and in your temperament. You are not moved by what people will say. You are not looking at somebody's phone to see whether it's bigger or smaller than yours. It doesn't make any difference. If God has made you the toe, you stay as a toe. If God has made you a tongue, don't try to be the stomach. Stay as a tongue. Direct food into the stomach. Hallelujah. All of us are members of one body. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Christ. We're talking about the mystery of territorial power. But all this can only be possible when we begin to pray. Because prayer is what allows us to have mirror into the supernatural. Prayer is humanity communicating with divinity. The mirror, the way we get into the spirit is through prayer. There is no mystery. If somebody tells you what about the lying to you, the only way you get to understand spiritual things is by prayer. And the mystery of prayer has not been unraveled. People are still confused that someone just spoke somewhere and this happened somewhere. When you are a man, a woman, a person of prayer, you are a person that understands spiritual authority. You are a person, and I'm not talking about the prayer of the mandate because many of us fall cheap for that. That's the lowest level to pray. Give me house, wife, children. God knows all those things. You go to God and ask Him. You pray to Him first. The Bible says Jesus gave us the command. Matthew chapter six verse nine. He said, "When you pray, pray in this manner: Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. You reference God, Thy kingdom come. You are telling Him about what He has established before the foundation of the earth. The kingdom of God has been here before we were formed. So you are telling Him Thy kingdom come, and I will be done. Not but also in my life, as it is in heaven, when heaven begins to come my life on earth, then everything is set. In that you get house, wife, all those things. The Bible says, seek you first, Matthew 6, 33, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, whether you are talking about everything, vacationing, living a good life, having a wonder, all these things shall be added unto you. But you have to seek first the kingdom. The kingdom of God supersedes everything. Not church, not religion. You get to the kingdom by the way of salvation. Salvation is not what God wants us to be. A lot of Christians are so comfortable with salvation. That way you are saved. That's it. Saving is the lowest level of Christianity. Be saved, be born again. That is the entry level, if we have to put it in criteria. The entry level into the Christian dog is to be saved. If you don't stay saved, you but I don't want to live in Abraham's bosom like that. He didn't have his own house in heaven because he never built a house there. He was busy here as a righteous man and he died a poor man here. He became poor in heaven also. That's not the goal of God. You have to be able to do a lot that when you come, they will show you the mansions you have built. The Bible says, Stack of treasures in heaven where there is no more, there is no thieves, there are nothing to eat it up. So salvation is a gateway to know the mind of God. If you are saved, thank God. But God, what is the next level? I like the way the Colossians put it in John chapter three. Let's read it. Oh, Karabashi, Karabadi, Karabasi, Koto. Oh, Madarabashi, Karabashi. John chapter three. The Bible says there is a man of the Pharisees, namely Nicodemus, who came to Jesus. This man was already saved. Some people preach this place wrong. Man was an he was not an unbeliever. If you look at the position the man was occupying in the temple of Jerusalem, he was a man that understands the Torah. He knows a lot of things about the world. But there are spiritual things he didn't understand. I would say there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jew. So he can see his position. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are the teacher coming from God. For no can do these signs that you do unless God be with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, verse 3, except, verily I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So born again did not just give you anything but the access to see. To have the preview, like window shopping, you go into the mall, you are looking at good shoes, you don't have the money to buy. You have seen the prices, so you can go back and save up money and come to buy. So born again gives you the access to preview the heavenly wife, you see all these things, and you say, God, how, what do I do to get that woman? And God will tell you what it takes to make it happen. That house, I like it. How can I get it? Then you get, you see, the preview of what 
your destiny is and what your assignment is. That's what I call spiritual mapping. You are being open that you are they open you up with the spirit and you begin to see the dimensions of things. That does not mean that you can own them. If you just do window shopping every month, you can walk around in the mall or go to a car and say this guy is how much they say it's five thousand. Is that how much it? You drive it around and you come back and go to another part of the you say how much is it seventy thousand? You drive it. You will never own any of those guys. But you are saying it, you are dreaming it. It's a pretty old. That's what God again gives you. The access to see. To see power. To see the dimensions of power. Then now, look at that's why. Hallelujah. I hope somebody is getting what I'm saying here. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the man began to say, well, how can this thing be done in this? And to I go back the second time? Jesus said, no. That's why Jesus said, very nice thing about you. Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he, he cannot enter. So the, what gives you the ability to enter and begin to possess things is to be born of the water and of the spirit. So I know a lot of Christians, they say, oh, for the water and for the water. It's good to have the water. But the water without the spirit cannot give you any result. And some people say, I'm a spiritual man. Everyone who is born of the spirit. We 
you are born of the spirit, you are king. Nobody can catch you. Amen. They see you from the day I come to the house. Amen. Until you get to the place where the devil knows you, know you are against but they can't oppress you. And anytime somebody brings up your name in their coffin, they say that and they don't go there. You have fight for the new world. Amen. The wind comes from where it comes and you hear the sound, but you know it no way it's coming from the way it's going. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. You are like a wind. You are a man of the spirit. You understand this. The devil, you are 20 times ahead of the enemy. Because the Bible said in that same John chapter 3, verse that coming from above. Above all. You are above principalities and powers, thrones and dominion. We have to get to that place. That's where God, our our ordination is not just to come to church to be a Christian. That is good, but it's not good enough. Hallelujah. Amen. Good is not good enough. Sometimes you have to go better. And there's always a better way to do everything. I remember when Paul was telling them, I think in Hebrew chapter 6, depend and stay on this financial things of, 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 of salvation. He said there are many because people were just being born again, repentance from dead world baptism in Lane of They were teaching them those doctrines. Paul said, yes, but we have to go higher because there are other things that accompany salvation. Salvation does not end with an entire judgment. If you are just there, it, that means you can't do much. You can't even buy the devil. You know yourself, you know that you are a Christian. But you are not able to move a little in the spirit. It, it doesn't really work it all. Right. You have to go. If you want to be part of something, be part of it. That's the God will depend on you. Because see you your family. And there's a problem in your family. God knows that you will pray. God will not be sending himself. Because every time God tries to do something for us, it takes a lot of things. Do you know what it does? What, what it takes to move the holy of holies? The angels of God from heaven to come down for God to move something when God has you. You are the one that will change your family. You are the one that will change this church. You are the revival that you are waiting for. We should not wait for anything anymore. The Bible says, carry you in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall receive power. Once you receive power, then you are a witness. You are a testimony. You begin to move in the power of God. There is dimensions that you begin to operate in. From that day when they receive power, they change the world as it is today. 120 men gathered and prayed for 50 days. And Jesus never gave them time. He said, Carry you up here. And they will pray every day. But by the time the Holy Spirit came, in Acts chapter 2, they were tired. They were sitting there. It's not like they were standing and praying, they were speaking in tongues. No. They were just there. The as they were sitting in the room, there was a wind that came in like a rushing man and sat upon them and they were tongues of fire on everyone. And everyone started to say, I see fire on the head. You said, I see fire on the head. I see fire. They came out. These are people that were so afraid to even mention the name of Jesus. In fact, the day Jesus died, Peter denied him three times. A child of nine years said, I do not want to be I said, I don't know him. But that day, because there was an empowerment, he has received fresh anointing. He came out and the Bible said, and they began to speak in diverse of tongues. That even the people that saw them say, Are these men not Galilean? These are fishermen. These are people that didn't go to the school. How come they understand every man's language? There is a mystery when you get into the local room. There are powers that begin to accompany you. There are things that you begin to unravel and understand. There are dimensions of authority. Every fabric of power that existed in Jerusalem, they broke it that day. They came out and they took the whole city of Jerusalem. They began to take Judea. They took some They took the other part of the earth. They began to go to Rome. They began to move to Africa. They began to go. The power of God was moving like the wind. The wind comes. And we hear the sound. But we don't know where it's coming from and where it's going. So it's every man that is born of the Spirit. We must get to that place. The mystery of the natural power. So from today, you get to the place you move into the neighborhood and things are beginning to happen. They get to the don't, don't run away. Maybe you have discovered that you have not discovered that. Go back and say, what is in this area? What, what is in this area? I don't know when we move to where we go, where we need to 
Every day we enter that house. I think two days after. I'll be upstairs, I'll be hearing boom, 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 boom. My wife said, This is the whole house. We have to get out of this house. I said, No. The first thing we have to stay. You hear the sound like somebody is beating the wall. What did I do? In that wall, that was it. My dad, I went to that crazy. Ego 
music only that passion. You start to get momentum. You start to tune your spirit. And you leave this and you go into the first and second level. You leave here, you go to the third level. You see yourself in the whole of holies. The Bible says the spirit begins to pray for you. The book of Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Say, who are you, Almighty? There is a mountain in the 
that place, but you can see it. Who are you? What man to be forced to go there? Thou shalt become a player. He said, for the hand of Zerubbabel has begun this house. His hand shall complete it. And the prophet said that at death, the work finished. Today, I don't know what you have started. You shall finish it today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every mountain in the spirit, this is the end of the year. You are ending this year. Whatever is an impact, it can be legalization, it can be marriage, it can be job, career that the devil has used as an impact. The devil keep it. You are not asking for the job, you are telling the source of that problem to get out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Who are you on mountain before this church, before our lives? You shall become a play by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus.
call him, but he's not the power here. Yeah. He will not fight for you. He will fight that battle. So when you say, fight, I call, fight, I call. Remember when Elijah said, Oh God, hear me as I call you. If I be a man of God, come down by fire. Fire him down. Whatever you call, you say, I need rocks. I need a wood B54 bombs. You start to see that happen. Because we are weapons. We are weapons. He said, You are my battle axe. God, I am your battle axe. And I will fight a just battle. Every battle in my life, I start to break them in pieces. For you have made me all of to stand in my family, in my ministry, in the places that you have placed us, in our careers, businesses, and jobs. God, you are going to use us to set the apostolic order in this city. This city of Lebanon, the county of Guinea, the state of Georgia. We stand over as an authority in this land, as a watchman, as we pray. Everything we ask, you shall make it come to pass. Amen. 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 Amen.